to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. We are here today because the TTC is broken. Yeah. Service is unreliable. Shame. Delays and shutdown happen all the time. Like what? Yeah. And slow zones affect thousands of people every single day. Like me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In July, the federal government announced the Canadian, the Canada Public Transit Fund. This fund commits three billion dollars for transit across the country every year. But um, this funding doesn't start until 2026 after the next election, and it can't even be used to improve TTT, TTC service. We need the Canada Public Transit Fund to be bigger, faster, and flexible, and so that the now. TTC can, can use it where it's needed the most. Yeah. Damn right. What do we need? We need a fix, 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 fix the TTC. The TTC is part of a nationwide week of transit action, the first of its kind. And we are telling the federal government Step up for transit. Yes, sir. We yeah. need to make the Canada Public Transit Fund something that can fix the TTC and transform public transit in Canada. Make the funding available now, not in 2026. We need new trains on line two now before the current ones start breaking down. Mm -hmm. Make the fund bigger. We need real investment to fix public transit in Canada. Yeah. Yep. And the fund is just not enough. And finally, remove the restrictions. We need to make the funding flexible so cities and transit agencies can choose to improve service. All right, all right. Our first amazing speaker of the day today is Avrit Jagdev, the Vice President, Public and University Affairs at the University of Toronto Student Union. Avrit is a student who goes to the school in this writing and is going to talk about that experience. Take it away. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for the lovely introduction. My name is Avrit. I'm the Vice President of Public and University Affairs at the University of Toronto Students Union, where we represent upwards of 40,000 undergraduate students who attend the University of Toronto's downtown campus. And we are here today because public transportation is the backbone of our city. Yes, For many of us, yes, it is. Yes, For many it is. of us, including students, it is more than just a city service, it's a necessity. But right now, we are facing a growing problem. Our public transit system is not keeping up with our needs. It is slow, and it is unreliable, and it is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. That's why students stand with TTC riders in calling on the federal government to pitch in their share so that people in Toronto can rely on our public transportation system to get us where we need to go when we need to be there. Okay. Students make up a huge portion of transit riders in this city. Thousands of us depend on the TTC every single day to get to campus, to get to work, and to participate in the life of the city. Many of us cannot afford other means of transportation, such as cars, and without a reliable public transportation system, our freedom and our autonomy are threatened. We need more frequent and more reliable transit, and we need it now. It truly is time for the federal government to step up for better TTC service by approving the TTC's request for funding the new trains on Line 2 and by making the Canada Public Transit Fund flexible. This fund should work for us. Cities should be allowed to use the funding to improve service and to make our transit system one which we can depend on. We need to increase the fund to meet the many needs of the TTC, including addressing the issues of slow zones. We need new work cars to maintain the existing system and to keep our trains running on time. Without this investment, the federal government will be leaving students and all transit riders stuck. In 2026, less than two years from now, the TTC's current Line 2 subway trains will reach the end of their design life. We need funding for, a new subway, for new subway trains approved as soon as possible. Without these new trains, the TTC will have to spend an extra $1.6 billion just to maintain the old ones. How are students going to get to class in 2026 without the TTC? <laughs> We cannot afford to let this happen, and this simply cannot be an afterthought. That's why we are here today 
to ask the federal government to step up and to take real action by investing in a public transit system that works for everyone in Toronto, for students, for workers, and for the thousands of us who depend on it every single day. We all deserve a TTC that we can count on. Yes, we do! Yeah! A read. And you know, Listening to those words, I just want to say how important it is for us to be here today to fight for change. Us riders, we can see with our very eyes that the service that we rely on day in and day out is crumbling beneath our very feet. Just last year, the Scarborough RT catastrophically derailed and the entire line was shut down permanently, leaving Scarborough without any rapid transit. Out. Exactly. Fuck. The TTC is struggling to repair the subway. Even the repair equipment needs repairing. So I just really want to draw everyone's attention to that table right over there by the fence. We're all, we're all asking everyone here today, if you have a moment, to fill out a card on that table, write down the number one thing about the TTC that you want to fix. And then you can tie it to the fence that's right behind me. Leave your message to the federal government about the TTC that you want and the TTC that we all deserve. If you need time to think about it, it's okay, because our next speaker can maybe help you with some of the things that we need to fix. Our next speaker is Phil Pawthon. Go get him, Phil. Council and Program Manager, Land Use and Ontario Environment for Environmental Defense. We are very, very lucky to, sh uh, to have Phil here today. And he's gonna talk about the connections between transit, the environment, and housing. Thank you so much, Phil. Thanks, everyone. I, as mentioned, I'm a lawyer for environmental defense, but I also run the land use and land development program there. And uh, you may ask yourself, well, maybe it's no surprise that someone from one of the country's biggest environmental NGOs is here calling on the federal government to invest at least twice as much in public transit operations, to free up that money for operations, and to use that money as leverage to demand change in land use planning policies uh, around major transit stations. Uh, and maybe it makes sense and it's obvious because increasing transit service levels, investing in transit operations is the most important immediate tool that we have to lower our greenhouse gas emissions. The most persistent aspect of greenhouse gas emissions uh, in uh, Ontario generally and at the GTA specifically is transportation. Other areas are coming down, the transportation continues to get worse. And the only way, and, what, and fortunately we know a very reliable way to get those numbers down is through investment in transit operation and transit service and quick and dirty supporting investments in surface transit infrastructure. And while the government is talking about blowing 100, 150, 200 billion dollars on a tunnel under the 401 that will in reality never get built, but even by their own estimates, uh, it's not going to get built for many decades, uh, we can, by 2035, eliminate the majority of car trips that are on the road uh, simply by investing in improved transit service. Not just the majority, in Toronto specifically, we're talking about getting rid of more than three quarters of car trips on the road through investments in pu public transit operations and service. Uh, so, in a way, it, it's no accident that someone from Environmental Defense is here supporting uh, this initiative. But there were other aspects. Why did they send the guy from the Hands Off the Green Belt guy. Have you seen the Hands Off the Green Belt signs? Well, those come from a big pile next to my desk in my office. It's my program. So why is the Hands Off the Green Belt guy here? And why is the, the Land Use and Land Development guy here? Uh, and the reason is that funding transit operations and transit service is really a fundamental linchpin. We can't make the changes to land use. We can't slam the brakes on sprawl the way that we need to without shifting a lot of our investment into transit service. And in particular, if you can't find a home today, if you're a young person who thinks uh, it's unlikely that I'm gonna be able to find a, a home in the GTA ever that I'll be able to afford it, 
Uh, the reason for that is in part because of our persistently weak investment in transit operations. Uh -huh. We have enough construction capacity, we have enough labor, equipment, and materials to build all the homes we need for the number of people who are coming here. It is not true that immigration is the cause of our housing shortage. That's right. We have all the capacity we need. What we don't have is all the capacity we need to build that housing with parking. Yeah, that's also right. Parking is making the difference. As long as we have to build parking spaces for every home that we build, we will not be able to build enough homes to solve our housing shortage. And that means that transit operations, improving transit service, reliability, frequency, uh, on major bus routes here in Toronto, through programs like Rapid TO, and just increase bus frequency, but also expanding and, and expanding the level of service that we have in Toronto to the entire GTA will unlock literally hundreds of thousands of new homes that not just would be built more expensively, but would not be built at all without those investments in public transit. And, you know, we, we, my, my program, I deal mostly with the Ontario government and most of my criticism focuses on them. So we've called on the Ontario government to make those investments. We've called on the Ontario government to change its land use planning policies to mandate that every neighborhood around a transit station gets significant housing built there. That next to every bus stop, it should be legal without any zoning amendments, any public hearing, any changes to zoning at all to build a mid-rise apartment without parking up to six stories. So we need that to happen, and Doug Ford knew that we need to do that. They knew we needed to do that in order to end the housing shortage, to prevent it from getting as bad as it's gotten now, and they chose not to do it. Fuck yeah. Doug Ford! Over, Doug this Ford. over this entire time, though, the federal government has had the tools that it has needed to strong-arm the province into doing the right thing. And one of the most important tools that the federal government has is the federal public transit fund. And that's why we're asking the federal government to more than double that investment fund, but to make the additional investment conditional upon either the provincial government at the provincial level, if the province is receiving the funding, or municipalities directly upzoning the area surrounding major transit stations so that people can build mid-rise, zero parking, wood frame apartment buildings around them. And so that's why this isn't just about transit, this isn't just about uh, emissions, it's about solving the housing shortage. So if five or ten years from now, you find that you cannot find a home, you, you're, you're, you're done university, you're at the next stage of your life and you still can't find a home that suits your needs in Toronto, Part of the reason will be that the federal government hasn't listened to the voices around, this, uh, around us today. And so uh, I'm urging Minister Fraser not to make that a reality. Take the opportunity while he has it, double the transit fund, uh, and make it conditional upon upzoning around major transit stations and ordinary bus stops. Thanks, folks. Fill. Now all need repeat after me please. Fix, fix, fix. Fix the G So over the past six months, TTC riders have been asking MPs in Toronto as well as federal party leaders to sign the transit pledge. The pledge is as follows. I pledge my support for immediate federal funding for new GTC subway trains, accelerating the permanent public transit fund and making it available for transit operating budgets. So, so far, two party leaders have signed, Jagmeet Singh of the NDP and Elizabeth May of the Green Party, and three Liberal Toronto MPs have also signed as well. Sean Chen in Scarborough North, Salma Saeed in Scarborough Centre, and Nate Erskine-Smith in Beaches East York. Shout out Scarborough! We need every MP in Toronto to listen to us, to represent us. We need, the, we need them to step up and fund the TTC. That's right. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. 
every MP should have this signed, have, have, should have signed this pledge already. But that's why we're here, to show them that public transit is an issue that they can't avoid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. To keep doing this work and putting pressure on the MPs, TTC Riders relies on transit riders like you to power our work and with your time and with your financial support. One of our volunteers today has a little machine where you can tap your credit card or debit card and donate us $5, you know, just a little uh, TTC fare to the TTC riders. I'm asking uh, uh, each of you, if you can, just to tip, chip, chip in a little bit to our campaign by tapping your card, you know, help fund us, help, help us fix the TTC. Now we're going to hear from another speaker, Marvin Alfred, the president of ATU Local 113. ATU 113 is the union representing over 12,000 TTC workers. ATU members keep the TTC moving and see the effects of underfunding every single day. Earlier this year, they won a new contract that protects TTC workers and TTC service levels gets contracting work out to private companies. Please give a warm welcome to Marvin. Thank you, everybody. I just wanted to... Marvin! I just wanted to give a shout out. We as transit workers are the eyes and ears of the city. For example, the, the gentleman uh, not too long ago that pulled somebody from a burning vehicle, you know, risking his own life after being injured. We transit workers are the eyes and the ears of the city proudly, but we need all levels of government to support us. Predictable, dedicated funding is what we need. Funding to sustain transit, to keep transit safe for everybody, riders and workers. And we're here today to support that any politician that comes to your door needs to know what our position is going to be, that we demand that public transit needs to be supported with predictable, dedicated, sustainable funding. So I just wanted to make sure that I give a shout out to that gentleman. The narrative today is we have to hold our politicians accountable, making sure they want your vote and their support, that they need to support what you need, which is dedicated, sustainable funding for transit. Hold them accountable with your vote. me off script going back to script now all right ATU workers are fighting to keep transit public we know the cost of contracting out and using p3s ATU workers see the effects of underfunding neglected state of good repair public transit in Toronto has lost its put the public's trust poor service levels and unreliability are many among the many reasons what Toronto needs urgently is the federal government agility with funding public transit operations and maintenance what Toronto does not need is to be stuck in bureaucratic nightmare Toronto public transit users need improvement to serve it today, not two years from now. Service improvements delayed is service improvements denied. They need to know that we mean business. The public will not forget who does, and more importantly, who does not support predictable, sustainable transit funding. Everyone running for a public office should remember that. Forget that we don't want the smoke and mirrors. We need them to know when they knock on our door, we hold them accountable. We, know, we want them to know that we need that funding. It has to be reliable, ongoing, predictable, or else. Show your support. If they don't support what you want, you're going to take care of them when the ballot box comes out. Right? Make sure your vote matters. Make sure you vote for people that sustain, that believe in sustaining transit is a benefit for everybody. Everybody benefits from sustainable public transit. Transit needs to be there for everybody. Whether you use it on a daily basis or not, we need that transit reliability, and they need to show that reliability by providing and voting for predictable, dedicated, sustainable funding. Thank you. That was a great, that was a great speech by Marvin. Thank you, thank you so, so, so much. Wonderful. Hell yeah, brother. Let's get that energy going. Let's get that moving. Yes. I want I want you guys to repeat after me. No more slows. And fuck Doug Ford. I keep well, saying this because I'm want... fucking pissed. Yes, I am pissed too. Hell yeah, brother. Yes. Revolution. I want you guys to repeat after me one more, one more time, one little bit, one little rant, one more, one more chant. The TTC. I love your energy. I love it. Yeah, baby. I'm sure you're used to this one right now. So all together, fix, fix. Hey, we see you over there. All right. So our next speaker has been building tenant power in Toronto, fighting landlords, and winning. Woo! 
my goodness. We are so lucky to have Chiara Pavadone, a social worker and founder of the York Southwestern Tenants Union. Here to speak with us now. Take it away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give it up for TTC Rider. My name is Chiara Padovani and I am coming to you from the York South Weston Tenant Union up in the northwest of our city. We are the tenant union that has started the longest and largest rent strike in Toronto's history. Now that is pretty cool. I know some of you might be wondering what's that got to do with our TTC and I'll tell you something not only are the vast majority of our members renters in York Southwestern depending on a TTC system that has been underfunded underserviced especially especially in the northwest and northeast of the city we depend on it to get to work we depend on it to get to work to make a living in order to pay our rents that are getting higher and higher and higher every year. But there's another connection, and this is the one I want to talk about today, and that is the Canada Public Transit Fund, not only does it not have enough money in it, all right, but it puts a condition on housing around transit stations. That sounds pretty good. All right, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, let's, let's build more housing near, near transit stations. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Here's the problem though. There is absolutely no requirement for how much that housing should cost, whether or not that housing should have tenant protections, the most basic one of which is rent control. So that means when we hear government announcements about, oh, we're going to be building a new a new housing next to the new, I don't know, Keelsdale Station on the Eglinton Crosstown, whenever that gets built. That, sta that housing will not even be rent controlled. All right? Anytime, anytime we hear new housing is getting built and we should all be so excited because this is how we're gonna fix the housing crisis, we need to remember that absolutely none of that housing will have the most basic tenant protection of all, and that is rent control. Mm -hmm. Not a single unit built from now until whenever we get rid of Doug Ford is going to have rent control on it. And at the York Southwest Tenant Union, we know what happens when a building doesn't have rent control. And that's what started that long and huge rent strike in York Southwestern. It was that rents were going up as high as 25% annually. 25%. That is the kinds of rent increases we are going to be seeing in any new housing that gets built. All right? But here's the other thing that we know in York Southwestern, and that is when we come together, when we say that's bullshit together, yes. in big enough numbers, we win. And what happened in York Southwestern with our rent strikes is just one example of what can happen when all of us get together and demand better. And so that's why I'm here on behalf of our members of the York Southwest Tenant Union. I took the bus, took the subway all the way downtown to stand with TTC riders, ATU, environmental defense, student unions from across the city to demand that we gotta double the funding and not just, guys, not just funding for fancy new streetcars, all right? We need operational funding. That is the nuts and bolts of our TTC system. It's our brothers and sisters at ATU 
that are keeping our city literally moving. And we need to make sure that we are funding the operations of that. All right? So not just capital funding, not just fancy new shiny things. Okay, we need to fund the nuts and bolts, and that is operational funding. But the second thing we're here to stand together for is that we want to see that Canada Public Transit Fund needs to be used to actually force the province, because when Justin Trudeau says, oh, I can't do anything about housing, because it's the province's jurisdiction. Bullshit! All right? We need the federal government to say, you want some funding? Your new housing better be rent controlled. You want some funding? That new building you're building next to the new station on the Eglinton Crosstown better sure as hell be affordable. All right? So we want to see, we want to see the federal government flex a little bit and use their power to make sure our provincial government doesn't walk all over transit users and walk all over renters who are keeping this city going. So, give it up one more time for TGC Riders. Are we going to fix the TTC? Yes, we are! Are we going to fix the TTC? Yes, we are! I'm gonna pass it back over to TTC Riders. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. So we're now going to be hearing from uh, Shun Hang To, a TTC Riders board member who is going to address us in Mandarin and Cantonese. TTC Riders represents all transit users in Toronto and is lucky, very lucky to have board members and volunteers like Shun who can speak to these different communities. Please give a warm welcome to Shun. Hi, my name is Shen Hento, and I'm the board member of TTC Riders. I will deliver a speech in Cantonese and Mandarin for the Chinese community. Gong公交通對於一個城市的活力和埋佢的居民息息相關,大家最近在搭一號或者二號線的時候,可能都會發現佢有時候需要減速行駛,其中一個背後的原因就是安全理由。而家TTC面臨維修進度緩慢的問題
can fill out a message what you want the GTC to fix, the GTC that we all deserve, tie it to the fence right behind here. And we also have uh, some snacks on that table if you need a quick refreshment. And just as another reminder, I don't want to harp on it too much, but we do, again, have that machine. If you would like to make a donation to TTC Riders, every dollar counts. We appreciate it so much. Thank you. Things on schedule and on track and uh, just like all the subways and stuff. So, you know, we'll just start going back into it now, but please feel free as we're speaking and as we're going, continue writing what you want to write and what you want to see from the TTC. Grab some snacks. It's, it's getting chilly out here, so make sure everyone's nice and ready for everything. All right. So, we will now bring up another special speaker, Sumit Gluria, the president of CUPE Local 2. Representing 700 workers at the TTC, uh, CUPE, two, member, two members, are integral part of the TTC and keep it moving safe. And Sumit can speak on what's broken and how we can fix it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to uh, TTC Riders for organizing this. I think it's a great opportunity for, you know, the community and the workers to come together on shared concerns. Just a little bit about, my name is Sumit, I'm the president for Keepy Local 2. Um, our members maintain uh, critical, critically important electrical systems at the TTC. We maintain signaling equipment, um, we maintain communication systems, um, and, and overhead streetcar network that you see above you. And our members are out there working 24-7 more than half of what my members are working nights all year. They are there for a single mission, which is to keep the critically important and safety equipment running in, in good shape. And thank you. I'm, whenever I have the opportunity to work with my brothers and sisters, I'm amazed at the speed and familiarity with, with which they work. Um, so like Kiera mentioned, I think there is the shiny capital stuff um, but I think it's really important, and I speak not just as as a president, I speak as a TTC rider and a, a citizen of this city, that, that we maintain equipment that we have um, in, in good order. So preventative maintenance is incredibly important because when that does not happen, um, it, it fails, um, and then we have to, as a community, invest in brand new equipment and the cost of the taxpayers is a lot higher versus if we had just invested money in the right, and during the period of its lifespan, um, it could have lasted longer. It could have le led to less delays, providing better service and, uh, and reduced cost of the taxpayers. So I join you, local two members join you in this ask. Where is the provincial government? Where is the federal government? Why is it that it's only the municipal government and, and the fare box that is responsible for maintenance funding? Well, I can tell I you where the provincial government is. Right. They're too busy jerking off arms, dick! True. The, the maintenance yeah. funding should be increased um, uh, so we could have our equipment maintained in good conditions. Um, and I, we, we absolutely share uh, with you in the call that the Canada Public Transit funding, the Commission should be allowed to use the funding towards operation and maintenance and better service. Damn right! I hope, sorry, I'm, I'm still new at this. I have, I need some lessons from Kiara. Um, it's okay! Uh, so, I, I think that in, in this too, what our members do is, is capital work which is which is great. It is important, um, but but we find it is a an important. We're stakeholders. I think that our our concern is sometimes poor maintenance is then used to contract out public services, right? And 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 then then the contractors. Our position is that then they will you know milk the taxpayers and they're not accountable. Right now, here I am, the workers of this city are accountable to the citizens of this city. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I will leave it at that. Thank you again to uh, TTC Writers for opportunity uh, and this conversation. Have a good evening. Thank you, thank you so much, Smith. Thank you, thank you. The card and tie it to the fence. Um, um, we are now going to hear from another fantastic speaker, the Vice President External of the Scarborough Campus Student Union. Scarborough has been routinely left behind when it comes to transit. What's up with that? And as a student studying at U of T, Scarborough's campus, um, they can speak on the importance of improving transit in Scarborough and what the federal government can do to make it happen. I'm gonna say a chant, you just repeat after me. We want you routinely underserviced by the TTC and affect students so badly. Students who need to make it on time for their classes. Students who need to go downtown for their classes. It is a shame that the city of Toronto, that the TTC, that all of these organizations decide that students are not a priority, that people who take transit are not a priority. Shame! 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 shame. shame. With the recent shutdown of Line 3, the Scarborough people are now missing out from being connected to the greater Toronto area. The people in Scarborough have been left behind even more than they were before. The people of Scarborough are not important to the city of Toronto, nor are, they, or nor are the students in Scarborough, nor are the students who take the transit. Shame! Shame. The busway that was meant to replace the SRT was now consistently being delayed with nothing, and I mean nothing, actually being given to us in terms of updates. All we are told is that it is we will continue to be delayed until 2025, until 2026, until 27, 28, 30. We are not being told anything about our transit and we are left in the dark again and again and again. Shame! Fuck up! We have the Engling Eglinton East light rail transit that was promised to us 10 years ago. Just recently, just recently, the City of Toronto and the TTC have announced that they have released their environmental report. That means they are 10% of the way through. 10% of the way through with the EELRT. Shame! Shame! To put that in perspective, that is 1% for every year. Shame! Shame! The UTSC student community has been paying for this. Our money went to fund their Pan Am project, which was an athletic center, which was meant to be for the community. And in agreement, they were meant to provide the Scarborough students with a way to better connect them with transit, or to better connect them to the GTA, to make transit more accessible and more affordable. But of course, Scarborough, and students in Scarborough, and students as a whole, and the Toronto community as a whole will consistently be overlooked, and Scarborough will consistently be overlooked and ignored until we decide to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. We want justice, you say how? We're sending money to Israel. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for your words. Let's keep this energy going, all right? Fuck keep yeah! after me. Fuck no yeah. more slow. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> QP 3902 is the union representing contract academic workers at the University of Toronto. We're so lucky to have Woo! QP 3902 Woo! member Maria Dawson here to talk about their fight to improve transit for their members. A warm welcome to QP3902 back there, and a warm welcome to Woo! Maria. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, tough act to follow. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Maria. I'm from QP3902, which represents contract academic workers at U of T. Many of our members are students and workers who cannot afford to commute across the city that they live in and that they work in and study in. Many of our members are forced to live close to campus because transit is just too expensive and are being squeezed between the cost of housing and the cost of a TTC pass. 
There's no U of T without the students and workers who contribute to the university community. And as union members, we know that U of T works because we do. We need our city, our university, our federal government to deliver on the things we need to survive in Toronto's cost of living crisis. It doesn't have to be this way. Um, in our most recent collective agreement, um, in our negotiations, members of QP 3902 Unit 1 were able to win a commitment from the university to work with their union and the TTC to secure substantial transit fare discounts for our members. 45% of our student pass to be exact. Um, now we're calling on our university and our transit agencies to work with workers and students to secure reduced fares that make transit accessible and foster greater environmental sustainability so that we can continue to enjoy and live in this city. We're also calling on all of the campus unions to join our growing coalition for fair fares for student workers. Um, but that said, we know that this is a fight that can only work with a reliable public transit system that people want to use. <laughs> Invest yeah. Investing in transit will make it more reliable, safer, and affordable during this cost of living crisis. We stand with TTC riders in their call to the federal government to, take, to make the TTC more dependable for all of us. Thank you. Thank you again, Maria. Another war a warm round of applause, please. Warm round of applause to all of you. Thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. You have shown that public transit is an issue, is an issue that our MPs, our federal government must address. Mm -hmm. The TTC is broken, but we can fix it. Yes, we can. Fix, fix, fix. Fix the things. First, please call Minister Christia Freeland. You should have all received a flyer with her phone number on it. Give her a call, leave a voice message. Tell her that we need to improve the Canada Public Transit Fund. We need the Canada Public Transit Fund to start today because transit cannot wait. We need the Canada Public Transit Fund to be flexible so we can use the money to pay for the service that we desperately need. And we need a bigger fund so we can transform the way transit works in Canada. Finance, she can make it happen, so give her a call, send her an email, it's on the flyer. And once again, thank you so much for coming out today. You're more than welcome to stay, to mingle, and talk with everyone here. And yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Microphone. Hi, my name is Marvin Alfred, president of AT Local Women 3. And humbly, I just wanted to say thank you to TTC Riders. You do so much for everybody else selflessly. I think everybody needs to give a round of applause for TTC Riders, for the grassroots that you're doing, what you're doing to improve trains for everybody. So humbly, I just want to say thank you from Local Woman 3. Thank you for all that you do. All that you do for us, all that you do for transit, all that you do for the city needs to be taken notice. And thank you so much. Just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Marvin. So touched by your words. And of course, transit in the city can't run without ATU 113 members. So yeah. Just say, just, just a reminder, we are a grassroots organization. You know, we run off of our volunteering. That's why, you know, we ask kindly and suddenly for donations because we don't have anything else other than us and you guys. So you guys can actually go to ttcriders.ca and sign up to be a volunteer. It's as simple as that. Our work in communities across the city is the foundation for change. While you are there, sign a, sign a petition asking your MP um, to sign the transit pledge and you know make sure to fill out all the card and, and fill it, sign it, put it to the fence and donate if you can, of course. But I want to thank each and every single one of you for coming out here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.